And welcome back to WGN TV Political Report. The second Republican in the running for Secretary of State this month is former state and federal prosecutor John Milheiser. Now, he's part of a slate backed by billionaire Ken Griffin, and he served as U.S. State's Attorney for the Central District of Illinois during the Trump administration. Well, after leaving that post last year, Milheiser took up teaching English and government in Springfield, and he said that's what led him to run for statewide office. The students. Take a listen. The students don't trust those in charge. They don't trust career politicians. And that was one of the main reasons that I, that I decided to run statewide and say, you know, we need to fix that. We need to, um, to make sure that we have good government. We can have good government in Illinois. Uh, and the Secretary of State's office is where most people are going to have contact with government. Uh, and when I'm there, we're going to have good government. Well, no question. Secretary of State, you're, the name is on our license, uh, our driver's license and everywhere else. But uh, is there any corruption issues that you see in the Secretary's office? And I say that because under Jesse White, since 1999, there haven't been any, you know, major investigations, allegations that we really hear about. And the, the Secretary of State prior to him was George Ryan, Republican, and we know how that story ended. So w what is it that propels you to, to address some kind of corruption in the office now? Well, Jesse White's leaving after 24 years. So we want to make sure we move forward, not backwards. Um, I worked very closely with the Secretary of State's office during my years as a prosecutor. Quite frankly, closer with SOS than I did with the AG's office. Um, different initiatives, different programs. At the Secretary of State's office, there's a police department with an investigative function. Um, and it, all those functions under SOS, um, I think, allow the opportunity to really reach out, cover all 102 counties, to make sure you do that and have contact with the public, uh, to make sure we provide good government, effective and efficient services, uh, which we will do when I'm Secretary of State. Overall, the website seems to talk more about cultural corruption issues than it does about the Secretary of State's office. Right. Well, I'll tell you, Paul, when I travel around, I'm concerned about corruption, as are everyone I talk to in Illinois. I've been traveling around the state, and they're concerned with this history of corruption and this culture of corruption. And one of the questions I ask is, okay, so Speaker, former Speaker Mattingly was indicted. So do we think now, because of this indictment, that corruption has gone to state government? You know, and everybody that, that gets a chuckle because it's kind of ingrained in the way people do business in Illinois, and we need to change that. I read an article recently talking about corruption in Illinois and said, from 1970 to 2010, so that is 40 years, there were 1,500 convictions for corruption in Illinois. So when I go back to the students that I'm teaching now and they don't trust government, it's because they read the headlines and they see that culture of corruption. They've kind of grown up with that and we need to change that. Uh, and we will, and specifically with what we can do at the Secretary of State's office, well, there's a whole host of things. Well, and specifically now I want to talk about the, mm -hmm. the, the duties of the Secretary of State. Uh, I think what you're addressing now, it's about getting your driver's license, going down there. I mean, there isn't, I don't think there's anybody in the state. You gotta, you gotta buy your, your sticker every year. You do all that. And I, I think like most people, I go online, I do all of that. So I haven't had any specific problems with it. In what ways are you hearing um, issues with regard to that part of the job, the part that people address the most and interact with the most, that they're not happy with? Because it would seem there have been a lot of positive changes over the last number of years. Oh, I, you know, and, and as I said, I work closely with the Secretary of State's office, and for the most part, it was, it's a good relationship I had when I was State's Attorney and as U.S. Attorney working with the Secretary of State's office. But I, I think when you look at the technology piece, uh, there are upgrades that can be made with technology. So right. more, well, so I, when you go online, you can actually get stuff done, I think, online. I've talked to business owners. They say, you know what? When I go online, I have to go through the Secretary of State's office to start a business. What if there was a toolbox, like you go in a toolkit for what, where I need to go to actually start a business for entrepreneurs in Illinois. That'd be great. Uh, I think also the in-person experience, not only online, but in person. And when people go to the office to make sure um, they don't have to wait for hours to get inside and then find out, oh, you don't have all the right documents. Um, I think there's a, um, there's ways you can use technology with your phone. You know, to get a haircut, you can check to see the wait times at Great Clips. Well, we can do the same at Secretary of State's office to see is there a long line or not? Is there a long wait or not? To come in and, do, and, and, and get your services done at the Secretary of State's office. Also, not only driver services, but there's so many other functions under Secretary of State that are important. The office does oversee the Illinois State Library, administers state literacy efforts. Mm -hmm. So what programs do you have in mind that are important there? Especially now you're an educator, right? You've got, probably got a lot of thoughts about it. Yeah, 100%. And so when you look at the state libraries, uh, there's money that goes to state li the state library, but goes to public libraries all around the state. I think it would make sure that those libraries are technology hubs. You know, libraries have changed over the years, but they're still very important to many communities around the state. You talked about adult literacy. Make sure we maximize uh, the grant money that is going out. Uh, I've seen firsthand for years as a prosecutor the importance of uh, somebody being able to read and write. You know, I can't tell you the thousands of folks that, that I prosecuted that would come through. One of the questions that the judge asked is, how far have you gone in school? So many of them 
10th grade, 9th grade, 8th grade, never graduated from high school. So understand the importance of that. Adult literacy, uh, not only when we expand uh, adults' ability to read, write, uh, do math, does it help with their, their dignity, um, but you know, they, they vote, they use public libraries, um, it, it gives them access to the job market. So that is important, that's a, a priority for me when I get in there, public schools, public education, public libraries, and also making sure that these adult literacy grants are maximized uh, to, to provide the, the biggest benefit to all of Illinois. So let's talk a little bit. Obviously, your office handles automatic voter registration in this state. It's different from some other states and being, you know, you're not the elections officer kind of a thing. But, but that being said, um, you know, you served as U U.S. attorney under a uh, Republican administration. Things have changed. I'm sort of curious. It is the law, but what is your view about automatic voter registration, having everybody, everybody uh, registered automatically? Right. Um, you know, that, I don't have a problem. I think the more people that we have vote and involved in the system, involved in the process, the better. Uh, I think we want educated voters. Um, I want to think we want to make sure an election, and people ask me, well, what about election integrity? Look, we want every eligible vote to count. We want every eligible voter to be able to vote. Um, and I support that, and I will as Secretary of State. Are there any changes you would make to that, or is it always, it seems like pretty much everything, it's just about more efficiency, is about efficiency, or are there changes or issues you have with the voter registration system? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think we want to make sure that every person that's eligible to vote has access and can vote, uh, which Illinois, quite frankly, has a very robust um, extended voting period time. And, I, and so I think they make that available, uh, and I, we want to continue that to make sure, again, every eligible vote counts. So j just for clarity, my yeah. final question to you, fill in the blank. Vote for John Milheiser because? Because he's a strong conservative leader who is reform minded, who has a history of fighting corruption uh, and will provide services in an efficient and effective manner to all 102 counties in Illinois. And whoever wins the Republican primary will face the top vote getter in the four person Democratic race. The field includes former Illinois Treasurer Alexi Janulius, a city clerk Anna Valencia, Chicago Alderman David Moore, and self described entrepreneur Sidney Moore. We're going to be talking to those candidates about their ideas for the office next Sunday morning. One more break, a closer look at the week ahead when we come back.